Hi folks, Bird Dog John here uh, with a quick little tutorial. Well, I don't know if it'll be quick or not, to be quite honest with you. Um, we want to talk about um, how to control our camera presets with a stream deck from Eligato. Okay, so we've got, um, I've got a little six button stream deck. It's the cheapest one you can get. It's about a hundred bucks or so. Uh, they also make a 15 button and then like some ridiculous one. Um, but the beautiful thing about Stream Deck is you can put on the buttons like pages. And so if you have, I have the nice 15 button one at home. And what I do is I, I fill up the majority of them. And then for two buttons, you know, on the left side, top and bottom, you can like add a folder basically, which creates basically a new page. And then you can continue to make those uh, and have as many pages as you want. So it's a beautiful little uh, functional device. Uh, it's kind of the other answer to what X keys is. And Stream Deck is really nice because they're all little LCD screens and you can customize those screens to be whatever you want them to be. So today I'm gonna to show you uh, where to find this program and how to set it up and uh, my profile and kind of what it looks like. And then, um, yeah, hopefully this will be helpful. So let's get into it. I'm gonna switch over to the desktop real quick. All right, and uh, we're just gonna go to your favorite search engine. Um, I wouldn't say Google's my favorite, but anyways, we'll, we'll stick with this. And I'm gonna type in uh, the, the company name that makes this is called BitFocus. And then the app is called Companion, okay? And so BitFocus Companion, here it is, the first option. BitFocus.io is the website, if you'd rather. And uh, they say, you know, do you agree to cookies? Okay, you have to. When you click download, it's going to take you to a user login page and you'll put in your username and password and you're going to come to then this page, basically, which is their options for companion. Um, and you can now you may have to actually select it out of the products line and there's companion stable and the release candidate. You're welcome to use whichever you want, but I probably should state this right now. BirdDog officially doesn't support this program as a way of controlling the camera. We use it, okay? But BirdDog support and the BirdDog company itself, this is not a BirdDog uh, product and we haven't done any integration with it in terms of our engineers working with BitFocus to make this happen. There's actually all third-party guys doing this and so it's great, it's very useful and actually it's quite consistent and a good product and so I just want to show you how to set it up because I think it's a, it's a good little option if you want to spend a hundred bucks on a stream deck and um, have the option to call presets. Uh, here's how you do it. So anyways, we download the one that we want and there's a copy for Mac, there's a copy for Linux, and there's a copy for Windows. Uh, I'm running a Windows machine, so we would download it here and bring it into uh, my machine. Now, typical Windows install, excuse me, and... Uh, pretty straightforward. You need to be probably an administrator on your machine just to make sure you have access to everything. And it's not an exceptionally large download. It's about 100 megs. Uh, so depending on your internet connection, that's how that will work. And then uh, once you go through the install process, it's going to install a little program in your sys tray that looks like this. It's a little gray and black and white, and there's a red dot on it. And uh, we're going to click on that. And it's going to say, select the interface that you want to use to interact with BitFocus. Now, this is really important. You need to select your NDI network so that the, the Stream Deck can see the products. This is just a little USB-powered device that plugs into your computer. But you need to select the network card that is your functioning NDI network. And so here, we've got a wired network, the one network that I use here at the office. And we're back into the web UI. Okay, so now... When we add a category, we should click cameras, and then under cameras, you'll see Bird Dog Visca on the latest version. And now we need to know what IP address our camera is, okay? So the way we do that is we can, well, one of two ways. First of all, you might know the IP addresses of it, but let's say you don't. Uh, we can open something like Studio Monitor, and Studio Monitor will ping your network for all the NDI sources out of there, and it'll say who's who. So let's pick the Studio P200 because that's the camera that I'm using for this show. And uh, here we go, Studio P200. And I'm going to click this little gear box in the bottom corner if you're using a Windows PC. That's going to take me to the web UI. And in the web UI bar address, it tells me the IP address of the camera. So 1.23 is the address for that guy. So here I'm going to go 192.168.1.23. Okay. And the label on this is Bird Dog Studio P200. 
and then we're going to say apply changes and now it should show up as a unit on this list and in a couple of seconds this will change from null to okay because it's going to ping that actual network and see if it's um, usable but now I've got that listed here so now I'm going to um, go to my presets option which is here on the next page and it's going to give me which instance do you want to program? What camera do you want to program? Uh, and I'm going to pick my new Bird Dog Studio P200. So I'll click on that. And then I'm going to click on Recall Preset. And these buttons are now uh, just, these are all pre-programmed inside of BitFocus, by the way. Somebody did all the work for us. So we're going to click on Buttons. And here it's going to show us the page that's on my Stream Deck. That's going to show us page one uh, of the Stream Deck layout. Now, the way you read the Stream Deck layout for this is, you know, I've got the six button, but maybe you've got the 15 or maybe you've got the big boy. Um, so the, the six button is this stuff here. The 15 is the ones with the gray border. Okay, all of those buttons. And then the big one here is, what is this, a four by, four by eight. Uh, so you've got lots of choices there. So that's how you read that and how many that you've got. And as we apply the changes, you're actually going to see them appear on the page that you're editing. So here I'm going to go to... Um, a new page, page three. Oh, I'm sorry. So these are the actual buttons. So I'm going to say page three layout. And on this page, you can see that I've got preset recalls. So I guess you can't really see that. Preset recalls already programmed for a different camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my presets here, Bird Dog Visca, Bird Dog Studio P200. That's what I labeled it. I'm going to say recall preset, and then I'm going to take preset one and drag it and put it on the buttons that I want to use on my stream deck for this purpose, okay? So there, I've dragged and copied over presets one, two, three, and four, and now I can go to my stream deck and press those recalls and see if they will actually call. That's preset two, preset three, preset four, preset one. Okay, so that works, and it's actually really fast. Now, the reason why my presets recall really fast is because I have turned off preset memory on my camera before I stored the preset, okay? So the reason for this is it just recalls the location if you turn off preset memory. So go into the OSD, go to System, and then go to um, preset memory and change it to off and then exit the menus. Then resave your presets in Studio Monitor perhaps. And it will only save the PTZ locations of the presets without recalling the coloration. Now, the reason why I do that is I'm in a controlled lighted environment. Or before my show, I go in and I set the lighting how I want it. And it's not going to change based on the recalls of the positions of the presets that I use. If you're using dynamic lighting or if you're doing long zooms, and so one's a big wide shot and one's a real tight shot, you're going to want the iris to move or adjusting shutter speed. But traditionally, you're going to want the iris to change. And so you may want to recall the preset option, preset memory on, for those long shots. But you have to pick and choose how you're going to do it. So um, perhaps running in a semi-automatic setting with preset memory off or uh, perhaps running in a full manual setting and then saving with preset memory on. That will save the coloration to each of the presets. It gets very complicated, but if you're in a studio or if you're in a room that the lighting is just on or if you have a, a house of worship or a conference room and the lighting stays generally the same, then you don't need to save the coloration settings on all the presets. What that does is it changes all the coloration on each of the preset recalls, but it also adds time. And so when I press preset recall, I can jump between them really fast, right? See how quickly I'm jumping between these? If I had preset memory on, it would jump to that location and then go through all the coloration settings really quickly, but it adds about one second or so of delay to being able to then execute the next command. So if you're trying to jump from preset to preset really fast, having preset memory off and then saving just the locations on the presets uh, inside Studio Monitor 
And if you don't know how to do that, you just go to this. Let's just uh, set this a little bit more centered, the picture here, a little more centered. And then I say it store one. And then let's uh, let's back away here. Let's back up a bit from my shot and let's get some of the desk and the lights and what have you. And you notice that the iris doesn't change, right? So I'm running on full manual, and so it's a lot brighter now. But I'm going to say store two. So now when I click on preset one, okay, it goes to that location. And then preset two goes to this location. Preset three goes to that location. Preset one, back to the main shot, okay? But it doesn't change the coloration on the shot. It leaves the coloration options as I have it set in the web UI. So that's how you do it. And then uh, we can just go here. Um, I don't believe that there is actually like a save function. Once you drag them over and you see them on the stream deck, they're programmed and they're good to go. And so then we can close out of this screen and we are all set to go. Hey, look, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, basic setup for companion with BitFocus and uh, your, your brand new Stream Deck. It's a great way to call presets. There are other preset options inside of there, inside of BitFocus. Matter of fact, let me do you one, one final thing and just show you kind of some of the, if you're thinking about doing this, show you some of the options that we have inside here. So you go to presets, you click on the, the one that you want. And now someone has gone to all the trouble to program the blues and reds, which is a dial that's on the keyboard. Someone has gone to all the trouble of exposure modes, changing those. So if you're running in full manual and you're just saving presets with location only preset memory off, you can add these to your stream deck. The 15 button one is really nice for this. And uh, you can add gain up, gain down, iris up, iris down, and make those changes on the fly before you cut to those shots. Uh, there is also some lens options, zooming and focus. You can adjust those uh, inside there. And these are all, you just drag them over, okay? You just drag them over into the Stream Deck, and now that button is programmed on the Stream Deck. Um, and then save presets. So here's here's an interesting thing. You can actually program a page to have save presets. So you could set up the shot and then hit that button and it would save the preset. And then when you preset recall on the ones that we just programmed, it would do the same as if we uh, programmed them in Studio Monitor. So that's super handy, especially because Studio Monitor only lets you save up to nine. Okay, so you can only store nine presets in Studio Monitor, whereas in Stream Deck, you can save up to 16. So that's really helpful. And on the keyboard, Bird Dog keyboard, you can save up to like 100 or something like that. So uh, you pick your poison and, and go with it. But it's a really nice option. Somebody's done a lot of work for us, and that's really nice. The last one I'll, I'll kind of show you is the pan tilt stuff. So you can actually program buttons to uh, do pan tilt. And let me just do preset recall four here. So presets, studio, pan tilt. I'm going to change three and four to left and right. So we just drag and drop. And now this option allows me to move the camera left and right, okay? The issue is, that I find, is that if you're using this function to follow talent on stage, you really need to also include the speed up, speed down buttons because that will speed, that will turn up or turn down the speed in which you're following. And it's a pretty tricky to get it right based on the speed of the presenter. I've used this in live shots before and sometimes the speaker walks off quickly and sometimes he saunters. And so you don't necessarily uh, want to rely on that. Hey, we have a program called Cam Control that does auto tracking. That's really cool for this function. Uh, and I have a video for that available as well on the knowledge database. So check that out if you want to learn more about auto tracking. But the, um, the speed up, speed down buttons are kind of required if you're going to use these control function left, right buttons. Uh, you can even test that, by the way, by clicking on the button and say test action. Uh, and you can see what these do kind of digitally. The other thing about um, Stream Deck, if I'll, I'll just keep adding freebies here, is that you, um, Stream Deck, BitFocus, has integrated an emulator. And so what you can do is click on emulator, and you don't even need a Stream Deck. If you want to use j just your mouse to control these items, we can pretend like we have the big Stream Deck. We can set this up. Like perhaps you're pitching a, a budget request 
and you're saying, look, this would make it so much better for us at the control panel to have a stream deck so that we could do this. And you could fill up this entire screen with all these buttons and, and include pages and do a bunch of things like that. And then demo, uh, you just click the buttons and look, it activates them just as is. So if you don't necessarily want the physical device, you could run it as an emulator. It actually works as a full stream deck. It's the same. It's just not a tactile button. Um, you know, there, so there are some drawbacks there. It's a mouse click, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, it comes with an emulator if you want to practice or you want to test it out and see how it's going to look or you're going to set this up for a bunch of volunteers or maybe you're an installer. Uh, here's an option. Here's something that you can kind of set it up beforehand. And then when you roll up to the install, you just boom, set it up, roll it out, and you're good to go. So, hey, look, I hope that this has been somewhat helpful in an explanation for setting up BitFocus's companion to run bird dog cameras. Uh, that was the raw deal right there. That was the whole uh, you watching me do it from start to finish. But it's a great option, uh, especially if you your budget is about 100 or maybe $150. You can get the nice 15-button stream deck. And this is all free. Companion is free. BitFocus is free. You just set up a user account, download the program, and you get off and running. So hope that's helpful. Uh, check out our other tutorials on the Knowledge Database. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves. We'll see you in the next one. Later.